Hey YouTube. Well today I am visiting a very historic railroad bridge, the uh, Kinzu, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, bridge here in Pennsylvania. It's not that far from Bradford. And at one time when it was first built, it was the longest and tallest uh, viaduct you know, for railroads. Um, I mean, weird, they call it a viaduct. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm, viaducts to me are the ancient Roman ones that would carry the water. But, let's take a look at this. I mean, this is what is left of it. And there's quite a story behind all that. So the original structure was built in 94 days and using uh, columns of cast iron that were bolted together. They were hollow and or riveted together. And they did that with the idea that they would uh, flex in, uh, in a high wind because this thing is quite high. This is at the tallest point was 301 feet high off the valley floor, which is only, what, four and a half feet uh, shorter than the Statue of Liberty. Then in, uh, they said they built it out of, of cast iron. And then in uh, 1900, it was getting uh, a little dangerous because they could only take locomotives across this at five miles an hour because of the vibrations would cause those cast iron columns to bring like a tuning fork. And so they decided to replace them with steel to accommodate the heavier locomotives. And they kept the original uh, footings but and they replaced one tower at a time. They basically they had uh, thing they called a traveler that would go from one tower across to another. There would span one tower. Then they could tear everything out, rebuild that section, move the traveler out to the next one. And when they met in the middle, then they uh, the bridge was was had been redone. So let me uh, take a walk out here. So the original towers were made of cast iron columns, called phoenix columns, they were hollow, uh, and bolted together, or riveted together. And these are some of the originals. And then in 1900, they were replaced with steel. Right base. And mainly replace it because of heavier locomotives and the steel is definitely stronger than the uh, cast iron. So when this was completed, it was uh, 2,053 feet long and weighed 3.1 million tons. Yikes. Uh, when they redid it with the steel, it doubled it to 6 million tons. Quite a heavy thing. Um, <laughs> so in um, 2000, 2002, uh, the structural engineers checked it out. Uh, they had stopped running freight through here years and years before. Um, but sightseeing trips would come down here, turn around, go back, and they determined that it was unsafe. So they uh, shut it down to all traffic. And in 2003, they started to rebuild it. Uh, the, the rebuilding started in February, 
and by July 21st, the weather was on July 21st, the weather was turning really nasty. So the workers all got off the bridge and a uh, F1 tornado came through and knocked down much of the bridge. And we're about to see, we're walking on the part that was left and they turned it into you know, this viewing platform. And this is what happened with the tornado. Just knocked this all down. There's a little bit left over there. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but on top of these piers, the way they anchored the original one because of the wind coming out of the east, they um, had rollers so that they could move a little bit. The one side could move a little bit with the wind. Trouble is, they forgot that it rusts. That's what they kept when they redid the bridge. And um, the rollers got rusted, corroded, didn't move. And that's part of the reason this fell apart. Well, that 100 mile an hour wind's hitting it. Well, the fact that it's raining, I'm not sure how clear a view we're going to get down here, but uh, you got this real nice glass floor to look down, but we'll, we'll take a walk around. See, I'm puzzling about. And I'm going to have to go ask, and I'll, if I can find out, I'll let you know. Why two sets of rails? Is it two different gauge railroads use this bridge? That's the only thing I can think of. So, we'll see if I can find somebody to ask and find out. Well, I found out what was up with the two tracks. Turns out the intercept was for safety. That um, high winds coming across could move the make it really perilous crossing and the uh, if the train jumped the tracks then the second track possibly would catch it um, like I said they could only go five miles an hour across there because it was because uh, of the winds and the vibrations so that, there's the mystery of the two track salt so this is what it looks like on the underside of the bridge, looking through all of the towers and where it all of a sudden drops steps. That's to where we're up on the viewing platform, 225 feet uh, uh, high. So not quite halfway on the bridge. So why did it fail? Uh, well, 100 mile an hour winds, like I said, but part of it was, is when they rebuilt it out of steel and when they, they did not put in different bolts. They used the original bolts from the cast iron bridge from 1892, uh, which wasn't that much that old at the time and probably made perfect sense, but hundred years later, a little over a hundred years later, it probably wasn't a great idea. So you couple in the, the bolts that were over a hundred years old and the frozen bearing rollers that would help, help it uh, move, and give with the wind. And you got to you know, toss in 100 mile an hour winds, you got a recipe for uh, what we just saw. So I'm gonna get on the road after I can get in and get warm. It's it's not cold out today, but it's off and on again, heavy rain. Um, so otherwise I'd be going down this trail down to the bottom and really get a close-up of those towers, but I'm not big on uphills and pouring rain, so I'm gonna get on the road.
and see what I can find of interest for us. See you later, YouTube.